Hello, and uh, welcome along to the stream today. Uh, let me just... Oh, no, it's a bit better. Uh, so, today on the stream, uh, lunchtime stream, so uh, the idea being just to try and get something working quickly, uh, the project that we've been working on the last few uh, weeks is... Uh, a project that we're kind of codenaming DevGep, uh, mainly because it is myself and uh, Matthias Carlson, uh, also known as uh, DevLead on Twitter. Uh, we're working on something, and we're not uh, we're not telling everyone what it is just yet. Uh, but we are work we have been working on some of the some of the things for it. Okay, and what we've got so far is a uh, ASP.NET MVC website that. Uh, provides the ability to authenticate to uh, github and log into a website and on that website there is a uh, protected section of the website called uh, subscriptions and what we uh, what we now want to be able to do is we want to have a we want to have a another website or, or rather more specifically another uh, ASP.NET uh, ASP web API project that will provide some of the data for the website to then render onto the page, right? Now, the actual data, the actual data is going to come from a set of Azure functions. <laughs> Hello, Matthias. Uh, thank you for that cheer, uh, which you're saying brings everyone up to a thousand. Is that right? Uh, let me just check. Wow, look at that. Thank you very much. Uh, on the last stream when that happened to Maurice, uh, he got something popped up in his uh, chat stream to say that he'd reached 1,000. Uh, so it didn't happen for you. I think it only happens for the first person that reaches it. Uh, but I appreciate the, uh, the cheer there. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have this site. What we want to do is, or, or rather where I was... Uh, the actual data for the site is going to come from a set of Azure functions, and that Azure functions do a bunch of stuff, and that's really the the the, the meat of uh, what this service is. So that's the part that we're not really talking about yet. But what we want to do is we want to provide a ASP.NET web API that can communicate with those uh, functions, pull some data from them, and then provide it to the ASP.NET MVC website that we have. So what I want to do is I want to create a new solution. Now I could create it as another project within the solution, but to keep things together, or rather not together, I'm going to create a new solution specifically for the web API. You could just uh, DI an Azure function to do the API. Well, hold on, we, we spoke about this, Matthias. And I specifically asked you the question, do we need an ASP.NET Web API project? And your answer was yes. You could just DI as a dependency injection an Azure function to do the API though. So, so, so what does that mean? Am I not creating a, a Web API project? Oh, hold on. You could just do an Azure function to do the API. So, okay, so, so, do I or do I not need this web API project? And if I'm going to go down the route of having an Azure function, wh where do I start with that? I'm I'm willing to go down that route, but it's not a route that I've went before. So, is there a is there somewhere that I can start? Let's wait and see what it is. File new Azure. Let's let's crack on then, shall we? Let's do file new project, and let's do an. You're saying an Azure function, Azure function. Nope. Filter by Azure. Nope. 
do I need a specific workload installed in order for there to be a file new Azure function? Ah, uh, don't have the, uh, okay, so I need the Azure workload installed. Well, let's go and have a play at getting that, shall we? So I'm going to go old school on this machine and see if I can trigger that from in here, which I think I can. Visual Studio. Visual Studio Community. Modify. Is it in the start menu? I think this uh, brings up the same thing though, right? Yes, it does. So Visual Studio Installer. So what you're saying is I need to, uh, oh, hold, of course I do. So I need to first update the Visual Studio Installer. So let's get that done. And let's see what that does. Okay, so with assuming that I have this uh, Azure function in play. Am I right in saying, Matthias, that that will be a non-public Azure function in the same way that the other ones that we have are non-public, meaning that the ASP.NET MVC website would know where that function is and be able to communicate with it via probably some sort of shared key or something but it wouldn't be exposed to the public. Oh, look at that. Genius. Genius. Uh, okay. So, and if I do create this Azure function, then what you're saying is that I can add methods to that endpoint or that function that I can then call from my ASP.NET MVC applications. That's just a standard HTTP client kind of request to that Azure function to get that data, correct? So I'm going to say, I should probably have that one in there too. I don't understand why that one's not there. Uh, don't want node at the minute. I've only got .NET at the minute. And I don't have UWP. I don't need any of that stuff. So let's, let's do that, shall we? Let's see how long that's going to take. Hopefully not too long. That's a gig. That's going to take a little bit to download. Let's wait and see how that comes down. Okay. Um, the one thing that we did have to do that... Oh, I can't really do that just now, can I? So while that's doing that, I did have a thought that I could do something that for the other site. But... Let's have a think. Because if we go back to, uh, or rather, if we go to PowerShell here, what we ended up doing on Monday night session was we added a full cake build for the site as it currently stands. And we also re-enabled both dupe finder and inspect code. But what we noticed was that the inspect code was being a little bit too excited. That's for a better word. It was examining too many files. Now the way that inspect code is controlled is it uses a what's it called? Uh, a dot settings file, a, a solution dot settings file, and our project currently doesn't have that. And as a result, it was examining too many files and folders in the project that we are running in spec code on. So we wanted to be able to reduce that. Now, the way that I've done that in the past is to use ReSharper and specify to ReSharper to don't examine those files and folders. But in order for that to happen, ReSharper would have to be installed in my Visual Studio instance. Now my Visual Studio instance is currently the community edition. As a result, it's not. I can't really do it that way. So we may have to manually create that .settings file. 
Now, Matthias is also saying, uh, could prepare a HTTP client via dependency injection that adds a common HTTP client per service. Okay. And then we've got a link here. So let's have a look at that link and see what Matthias is up to. Let's open up Chrome here. And let's paste this link into here. See what it's saying. Use HTTP Client Factory to implement resilient HTTP requests. Look at that. Blah, blah, blah. What is HTTP Client Factory? Multiple ways to use Client Factory. Oh, that sounds good. Use type clients. Okay. Set up HTTP client factory in your application using a reference to extension to HTTP package that includes add HTTP client. Extension for iService collection. This uh, extension method registers the default HTTP client to be used as a singleton for the instance. Oh, interesting. Okay. Essentially, startup services of the HTTP client. Yeah. Registering the client services as shown in the previous code makes the default client factory create an HTTP client configured specifically for each service, as we'll explain in the next paragraph. Just by registering your client service class with add HTTP client, the HTTP client object that will be injected into your class will use the configuration and policies provided upon registration. Interesting. Okay. So implement your type class. So here we are, here's our thing, and then this is what we're injecting into it. Fine. And then we can just use that HTTP client to do all its things. So where does, where does that API come from? Oh, I see. Oh, that's just something. Okay. Both reused for perf, but also recycled to handle TNS changes. Okay, I get that part. Um, that part I get. So here in my controller, I'm then using a service, and then yada yada yada. Okay, so let's maybe while this is doing some stuff. Let's have a look at, that's still building as well. So this, what I was going to talk about was this 2,984 issues found. That's because inspect codes being a little bit too brutal in its uh, inspections. So we need to restrict those from going all the way down there. But you know what, let's just end this build because we've got something else to play with now. So let's go and code here. Oh yeah, it's 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 literally everything in that www root folder. We don't necessarily want to inspect those because those are the libraries that we've included. We're not actually modifying the files in there. Uh, so we can just exclude the entire www root folder. I just need to remember how to do that in the uh, .settings file. Um, okay, so that file we can get rid of. That was an auto-generated one. Okay, so as of right now, in this source folder, we have a subscriptions controller, but the subscriptions controller doesn't actually do anything. So based on this, uh, based on this thing here, we want the concept of a service. So I think we should have a subscription service. So let's go back over here and oh, we have got services but we don't we're not using any of them yet so let's create a new one called um i subscription service dot cs and we'll have another one that is the subscription service dot cs and in the subscription service, let's 
borrow some of this so that we don't have to do it again. And then in here, we will have a public class. This was our subscription service. And it is going to implement the subscription service interface. We haven't got one of those yet, but we will in a sec. Let's put this in here. And then let's just do this. Whoa. That is Synergy kicking in there. Public interface I subscription service. Okay. That is where I was going with that. Yep. So at the minute, I was just going to do a, a get at the minute. And this was going to be public list of subscription. We haven't got a subscription class yet, but we'll need that. So list of subscription get eat get subscriptions. That's where I was going. And then for now we'll just return a new list of subscription. Perfect. Look at that. And then we need a subscription class. So let's go in here and create a new one called subscription.cs and that's going to be a public class subscription and then that's just going to have a, let's just call it an ID property just now, right? Beautiful. I think we're ready to ship this, Matthias. It's ready to go. Uh, that's going to need... Uh, no. Oh, you want it to be a string? Oh, sure. We can do that. Um, is that from the right one? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's in the wrong namespace. That's why it's confusing me. So this needs to be models. I was wondering why that was just working. Now it's going to fail. We need to use that one. Uh, Matthias said he wanted that to be a string, not an int. Sure, we can do that. There's a string. Look, just change the model. And get subscriptions. So based on this document that we were following, we can we need to add the Microsoft extensions.http package. So let's have a look here. Let's go in new get. And let's have a little looky. HTTP. So extensions.http is at version. No, I don't really want the preview, do we? Let's let's get a or do we? Let's stick with the let's stick with this one, shall we? Oh um, back into here. Let's create a package reference for that. Which should hopefully kick in. Uh, beautiful. So Matthias is in agreement. Good. <clears throat> so now in our startup we should be able to do stuff. So in here, we're going to want to do services dot add HTTP. I can't type HTTP. Add HTTP client, which is there. And then we give it the interface and the service that we're going to be talking to. So that was our I subscription service talking to our subscription service. I feel I've done that wrong. Yeah, I have. That was in angle brackets, not those ones. So then that. Okay. Yep. And then, oh, I've got too many closing brackets now. Okay. There we go. So then in our service, we can now 
accept an HTTP client, according to this thing. So if we go back up to here and create a constructor, why did that not? Subscription service. That's going to take that, and then we can have a private, if I can type, private read only HTTP client, and we'll give that as, I always debate about this, but let's do HTTP client, and then that local one is going to be equal to our one that we get injected, which is there. HTTP client must need a using, using net HTTP. Okay. So then I can call that, which sounds perfect to me so far. So then in here, we can say uh, var subscriptions, subscriptions is going to be equal to H underscore HTTP HTTP client dot get stuff and then we're going to get a list of subscriptions and we're going to return it right all sounds good so far okay now I was going to have a look at something while I remember because I saw it on Twitter the other day, which means it must be true. If I go over to GitHub and go over here to my gists. Oh, that's almost finished by the look of it. Uh, starred. Then Mr. Christian Halang has some extensions for working specifically with JSON. So it has post as JSON, put as JSON, read JSON, and then we can pass in an object to return from. So I think I was going to borrow this. So I'm going to unashamedly steal this and then put a reference to Christian in my code. Well, let's just check to see what I'm assuming. It won't have a license associated with it, not in a gist. No, he doesn't. That's for the... Mm, I... Th oh, is it? So, meaning, is it not just... Oh, so it's not just JSON convert. That's unfortunate. Because I don't think we're up to that new one yet. We're not up to the new one. So, okay, we can't do that then. We might have to do it the old-fashioned way. But, okay, let's, let's stick with that. Okay. So, is this installation finished? Oh, hold on. Reboot required. Uh, okay, let's save all these things. Because I want that Azure workflow installed while Mateus is on the, on the stream here. So, let's close down some of these things. And let's... Uh, Please be patient while we reboot this machine. I can do this on stream because this is just a VM. This is not my actual machine. So um, you can still be with me while I do that. So let's just restart it. Um, and so then, well, a question for Matthias. Um, does that workflow then also include the... Uh, Azure Functions emulator, the, the local one, so that I can test my Azure function, or is there something else that I need to install on this machine with this? Oh, it does. Perfect. So once I create an Azure function, I can then just spin it up and then start hitting it and seeing what it comes back with. Emulator should be included. Cool. Okay. So it's rebooting. We're almost there. Let's see what we get back. This behind the scene, by the way. You're seeing behind the scenes of my 
stream here. This is me spinning up my Vagrant box, which is what this VM actually is. But I did a manual reboot there rather than a, a Vagrant operation. But it's getting there. I was hoping this was going to be quicker. <laughs> Any questions in the uh, chat room there about anything that we're doing other than what is the DevGap uh, project? Because it's still secret. When are you free, by the way, Matthias? At some point, it would be good to have you on the stream to start putting some of the pieces together on this and maybe uh, giving some hints as to what it is. Because I'm not here next Friday because I'm in London. I'm traveling down for a training session that I'm really quite looking forward to. So that was... I was kind of assuming that we could set the base address and common headers and all that sort of stuff on the H3 to client that's getting injected. I kind of figured we could be able to set some of that stuff up in the DI container, so that's good to know. Okay, so having installed that new workload into our Visual Studio Community instance, let's have a look to see what we get. Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Being able to set it in one place uh, definitely helps. So let's do create new project and see what we get this time. Do -do. Do -do. Okay, so I can, I'll can. just type function. Oh, look at that. Right. A template to create a new Azure function project in C Sharp, Azure, and Cloud. Let's do that then, shall we? And we'll call this dev get. Yeah, naming's not really important at this point. Let's just call it API. And we're going to put this into, let's put this into the same sort of place as the other one. So into the C drive, into here, into here, into here, and select that folder. Beautiful. Place a place solution and project in the same directory. Um, Yes, maybe, maybe. Let's. I can never. I never remember. I never. I never get that right the first time round. Okay. So what do we want? We want a HTTP trigger. Where's the Azure MVP when you need him? He is still here. I think. We. I think we want just an HTTP trigger. Creates an Azure function project with an HTTP trigger. Additional triggers can be added during development. Or do we want an empty one since we're adding an API? I'm waiting for him to respond. Hopefully he's still here. HTTP trigger. Okay, fine. Let's do that. And let's see what we get in this function. It's building something, or rather it's creating something. Oh, here we go. Oh, where did it go? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have a function with function name one, whose method is called run, and then it does a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let, let's, I'm just gonna spin this up then and see what this does. So I'm gonna say dev gap API, I'm gonna run this up and I'm gonna see what it does. 
So before doing anything, let's just make sure that what we have works. And then we'll know that we can add stuff in. So this is an HTTP triggers who is authorized to do a get post and stuff. Okay. And then I'm going to need something to make an HTTP request to here. So I typically use something like Postman. Uh, Matthias, do you use something different? Or is that what you use also? What tool do you use to actually make this request and exercise it? Sort of, oh, here we go. I was, I was going to say, I'm expecting something to pop up to tell me where it's running. Here we go. So this seems to be running the func.exe, which is, oh, well, look at this. So Azure emulator has started. I'm going to allow access here. Click on allow access. And then it's listing on there. And I can make a get or a post to that URL. Invoke REST method. That's, well, yeah, I'm going to. Is also available as an N so Matthias in the chat room there saying that func.exe is also available as an npm module cross platform. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to install Postman because that's the tool that I've used the most. So let's get Postman installed and then we can start making some requests and seeing what it does. So let's. I'm just downloading that now. So maybe while that's doing that, let's just see if we can trigger a. Let's see if we can trigger something to here. So here we go. We're going to do invoke rest method. Could do a call if that's more efficient for questions. I think we're okay just now because I'm not really set up for that just now but I think I think I get the gist of what we're trying to do here so what I've done there is I have used an invoke rest method to call that API function and it's replied with Bleh, you haven't done the right thing and that's to be expected because this 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 one is expecting there to be a query string parameter by the look of it. Yeah. So it's saying bad request, please pass name on the query string or in the request body. You see the root is empty. Yes. So we can do that. We can we can fix that, I guess, by doing Gary equals park. Let's see what that does. Let's see my text again. Please pass. Oh, name. It's looking specifically for a name. There is what there one there one have IE. Subscription ID, then you just put a subscription ID variable. Is that what it's looking for? Hold on. I thought I was looking for name. I just read the message again. Query string name. So rather than that, we can say name equals guy. Let's see what that does. So let's step it through this thing. So now we should get, here we've got Gary. And then we get Hello Gary, look at that. So this is the this is the Azure function equivalent of Hello World. Lots of magic with function bindings. Absolutely. Okay, so with this in play, I want to create a endpoint. That's the, that's the wrong term. In this API, I want to create a I want to create something to get subscriptions. So it doesn't matter how it's going to get it just now, but I want to make a function method 
and I want to get some stuff. So what's going through my head just now is, well, what should that what should that look like? What should the what should the API surface look like? Oh, hold on. What are you doing here? What are you sending me now? Let's have a look. It's Google coming up. And let's create another one. And paste this in. Make uh, adding parameters to function roots, function name example, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Oh, I see what you're saying. So get put subscription. Get subscription equals list. Yes, get subscription ID equals get put subscription plus add. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree. But so I always need this run method. Is that right? So this, I always need a run in my function. So this here is always there, correct? And then I specify in here uh, the entry point for the function is the run correct okay so let's so over here the root was example parameter so root is example so let's maybe they, let's I'm gonna I'm going to mix this up a little bit. I'm going to say this is subscription. And then in here, this root is going to be API slash subscription, I think. I was coming back to that. I was coming back to that. I was. So function name is subscription. The root is going to be API subscription. And what I'm returning is going to be a new something. I usually rename the class and have the function name be name of class. Well, we can do that. So this is going to be I should so subscription. Let's fix this over here as well. Subscription and then function name you're saying is going to be name of subscription, right? Then it stands up. Yep, yeah. mm, hold on. So you want this function name to be. Is that over here? As in, you wanted this to be get subscription. I, d I don't want to do that. That feels wrong to me. Oh, hold on. Oh, you want oh you want this to be get subscription. I see. So get subscription. Oh, I see. Okay, hold on. So you're saying that there's going to be an Azure, a separate Azure function for each. API endpoint. Is that correct? Is that what you're getting at? I think I'm still thinking in the mindset of there will be multiple methods in here, but I think you're telling me that that's not going to be there. And you're saying that API is implicit. So let's take that out. And then I'm missing that in here. Okay, so if I run that now, what does that get me? Okay. Yep, I see what you're doing there. 
So we should have Postman installed now, which we do. Okay. Oh, look at that. So that's all changed now. Okay. Okay. So that's that's shaping up the way I want it. So this is now localhost blah API slash subscription. Put patch delete would be a separate function with different verb. Okay. So we need two functions, one for the getter and one for the manipulation of things. And based on what verb is passed in, we will do things with it. Okay. I make sense so far. So now if we go back up here to root and say there was some curly brackets involved here. So this is going to be subscription ID. Right. And then we can now based on the link that you sent me, I can then get that just by the string parameter. Oh, so I just I just add one in? Hold on. That's a little bit too easy. You're saying I can just add that in? Do the optional. What does that mean? Well, that's what, yeah, that's, that's where I'm trying to get to. But I'm looking at this. Do I just add that and that will magically create me a variable from there? Is that what you're telling me? So I can just do um, string. Oh, you see, that's subscription ID, right? So what we're saying here is let's take some of this out because we're not going to have that. So that's going to be broken. Just a question mark at the end of the root, as in in here. Oh, that's just crazy. Crazy talk. Crazy talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Let's do, let's change this up a little bit and say, let's just, let's just, so I, so I can get in my head how some of these things work. Let's grab this thing. I've got no idea what an awk object result is, but I'm, I think we might, I think we're maybe going to find out. Uh, we'll say would return list. would return single object, right? So then based on return uh, string dot is null or empty subscription ID. So if it's null or empty, then we're asking for all of them. So it's going to return a list. Otherwise, it's going to be a single object. Oh, yeah. Okay, but that's that's a step further. All I'm trying to see is, I, I just want to see it in action. Right? Oh, 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 is it an okay? Oh, hold on. I completely read that wrong. I read that as awk object, but that's a HTTP status OK object. So it's going to return a status 200 with a result contained within it. Totally read that wrong. Okay. So now if I grab this guy and go into Postman, I'm going to say skip signing up. And I'm just going to create a new request to this URL. And I'm going to say, I don't really care where it's going to go yet. Test. Okay. 
So I've now got that request. If I send that in, request URL is empty. Oh, I put that in the wrong place. Copy, paste, send. Did that get to my breakpoint? It did. Okay. So currently, subscription ID is null. So that should get me. Where's Postman gone? Would return a list because it's going to get me everything. Look at that. Let's take this breakpoint out a second. And if we say one, oh, look at that. And then it would get me a single object. And then that will get me a list again. I'm seeing how this is going to shape up, I think. I'm liking this so far. Okay. So we've now got a Azure function whose API surface is going to be um, API subscription with either a subscription ID or not. And then we're going to return something, right? Now, in question for the Azure MVP in the in, in the chat room. Can I, or what's the done thing in terms of sharing a model? So right now, I have a subscription model in my uh, DevGep site project. Can I just, can I reference a DLL here that has the subscription model in both cases so I can both serialize and deserialize to that class? Can I just reference another project in here? I'm, I'm, or can I? It's got dependencies. So can I add? Oh, I can add. It looks like it doesn't. Looks like I can. Okay, so we could extract that model into a common base class, a base project, and share that here. Okay. And then I'll be able to return a list of those. Okay, okay. So now what I need to do is I need to, well, let's maybe, do I want two instances of Visual Studio or do I want, let's maybe bring this into one solution then. So you could just add hard-coded like the code I added above. Uh, the code you added above. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So now you could just do new array test list. Test. Yeah, so then test. Yes, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. So so what you're saying is, oh, I can't, I, I can't copy that anymore. I'm just, I'm mulling through things through my head now. So let's, let's close this solution, and let's have them both open at the same time. So let's go and open new project solution, and let's go here, and let's go here. Oh my goodness, that installation of that thing has. <laughs> So in here, we should have a devget solution. And we'll add this devget API into that solution so we have them both in the same place. And then we can start a little bit of refactoring. So in here, let's add uh, an existing project. And we'll go in our source folder and we should have an API. See, that's in the wrong place. I need to fix that. I want to add this project, right? Then let's add a new project called uh, a library um, I think we're in the right world where we can do a .NET standard library and we'll call this devgep.common beautiful Okay, uh, let's get rid of that one. And then in our site, we had some models. So let's add a new folder called models. 
and then into there, let's pick this guy up and put him over there. And then we'll delete it from here. And then we'll fix the namespace on here to be common. These would be... So, Matthias is pointing out that uh, when prod, uh, i.e. when in production, these would be separate repos and solutions so that they could be deployed individually. I had originally started, I had the same thought process. So I would, I need to figure out how that is going to hang together. But yes, I had the same thought. Um, so now if we go into our service, this should probably be broken because it's going to be looking for a model that it doesn't know anything about now. So we need to make this common and then we also need to reference it so let's go into here and add a reference to here and then we'll also need to do that on our api project which is going to be in here to that one okay so those now have Those now have some commonality. Okay, so we've got our subscription model and in our API, which was here, we can just say, return new object result, which is new subscription. No, not new get subscription, new subscription. And we'll do that with, that oh, doesn't know about it yet, here, stop fighting me little lamp, where, where did you go? Really? Yes. Let's tidy that up. I'll tell you that up. New subscription ID equals one. And then, oh, I done that wrong. That's, uh, that, that should be in the one below. I see what Matthias is trying to tell me in the chat room there. This is the one that I wanted to do in here. Because that's the single object one. And then in here, we're doing new array new subscription new subscription two and then I feel I need a closing angle bracket somewhere there we go okay uh, okay no I see okay so this would be Subscription ID, yes, okay. Okay, fine, okay, yes. Right. So now in my service here, I should be able to say uh, HTTP client dot get async and then it's going to want the URI of our site for our API, which I'm assuming is going to be one of these there. Oh no, that's a site, not the API. I want this one. Oh, where does it tell me that? I know I can get it from Postman, but I would have thought it would be in there. So that's going to be in here. So if I go in here, what does this want? This wants this. It's magic. Just an environment. Oh, is it? Okay. Fine. 
Um, why is it complaining? Pick sound. Eh. Oh, uh, give me one sec. I see what it wants. It wants a couple of those. Okay, so that's going to get me var response is equal to that, and then I'm assuming that we can do var subscriptions is equal to response dot um, what do we want to do here? We want to Content has a read as content. Oh, of course, I do. So that would need to be uh, async. This needs to be awaited. That then has content, and we need to read as async. And, and there I can do subscription, I think. I might be making some of this up now. Await response there, there. And then we should be able to return subscriptions. Subscription. But you think that this should be, but it's not always going to be that, though, is it? Or what did we do? Is it going to? Will it? Is it smart enough to do that? Uh, what's it say? Oh, do I need to make this a task? Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. This little light bulb really doesn't want to... So this is get subscriptions. Uh, return. Is that just a run? I always get confused by this. So this one's... No, it's not to list. No, it's complaining because I made this a task because it was... This is complaining. And I was trying to figure out... Oh, is it because I didn't... What's on the interface? Oh. We haven't added it to the interface. We 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 want to add that into the interface. So as a minimum, we want to do pull members. Is that going to work? Oh, look at that! Look at that! Didn't know you did that. Then what else is it complaining about? Why? The return type of an async method must be void, task, or task of t. Right, so I did that. Task. But then, what do I want to put on here? If you import system.link. Well, I can do that. Using system.link. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. And then this is going to fail because 
this is no longer a this is now a task of remove some of these. And then we can do that. And then we can also do that. And then make this a little bit easier to read as well. So we can do that. Okay. No, 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 no. Mm, list array. We'll have that discussion later. So in theory, if I do, if I set a breakpoint there, and I go into here, and I close this out, and I close this out, and I go into my, where's my Azure function here? Let's just see what this does. Okay, and then I want to do, yeah, that's exactly, I was, I was going to, I was literally just trying to remember where that was. Um, how do I do multiple start, set startup project, that's what it is. And then I'm going to say multiple, and I'm going to say that I want this one. Oh no, I want to start with. Uh, start and I want this one now oh I haven't got anything to trigger the get subscription method yet or do I no I can I can go to the subscription page is that where I put it so in my controllers in my subscription controller oh no you see I'm not this is it's not gonna work yet <laughs> I think I'm getting a little bit excited uh, we need a constructor here and that constructor is going to take in an i subscription i subscription service yes subscription service and then in here i can do a private read only I subscription service subscription service and here we're going to say oh I didn't make it an underscore should have made it an underscore subscription service equals subscription service and then in here when we go in here I haven't got any UI to put this yet but in theory we should be able to just do get subscriptions. We're not going to do anything with it, but it'll at least var subscriptions is that's so not subscriptions. Sub scriptions equals that. Yeah, but there's nothing in the view to do anything with it yet. It's a it's a blank page. <laughs> there's 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 literally nothing in that view. So we have to come back to that. But if I do this now then it should all work and if it does uh, that's the end of the stream that's that's that'll be it for today but let's let's just see how we go on all right da, da, da. it's all shaping up rather oh you see where was the build error they're using directive for oh really really who who added style cop to this project who who was it who was it Let's try that again. That was a poor, <laughs> a poor choice. But hey ho. It keeps us all honest. Okay, so it's starting up our Azure function. Right? Then it should spin up uh, the .NET.exe to run our site. Then Internet Explorer or Edge should pop up to actually log into the site and then going out in style okay so it's doing some stuff it's doing some stuff spinning it all up here is our site okay so that i can't get to subscriptions yet because well it's protected but if i go to subscriptions in here it's going to say no can't get into play you need to log in 
So we log in with GitHub, or rather we authenticate with GitHub. That'll let us log into the site. That should then take us into our Git subscriptions. Look at that. So we're going to call, so this is our ASP.NET MVC site, the service for that. That's then going to make a request to our API, which is our Azure function. So if I click continue here, it comes into here, right? Doesn't have a subscription ID because it's null, but that should return us two things. So let's put a, another breakpoint here so we can see the response. Get another breakpoint. Then if we F10 over that, our subscriptions then has two things in it. Look at that. So it's got an ID of one and an ID of two. Right. That's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So we click go and we should get back to we just get to the subscription page. We didn't, we didn't take that data and send it down to the actual client. But behind the scenes, we have we've done everything. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. Okay, I like it. So that then, so let's have a quick recap of what we've done before I need to go and do some actual work. Right. So we've created this Azure Function project with the sole purpose of providing a an interface to get the data from our other Azure functions, right? So based on what uh, Matthias was saying in the chat room, we can have a single Azure function for the gets. And based on whether or not we pass in an ID or not, we'll either return a list or we'll return a single object. So that handles the get. So we're gonna need another Azure function, which is for edit subscription. Now that can take a put, post, or a delete verbs. So the delete obviously deletes it, uh, the post would add it, and the put would edit it. So we can do all of those things in another Azure function. And then based on whatever the verb is, we can decide what action we're taking, right? Now, all of that makes sense in my head. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have to watch that clip later. Um, so with all those things in play, the thing that we need to do here is that the rather than obviously hard coding the subscription, we're going to want to go in to get those things. So right now, those things are stored in an Azure, bl an Azure blob, blob storage? No, a, a queue. No, a table. Azure table, yes, Azure table storage. So we have a table in Azure storage that has some stuff in it. And I'm, I've got a local emulator running. So in theory, I could have this Azure function read from a made up table in there, uh, pull those things out and return it to our ASP.NET MVC. All of this is coming together nicely. So I think that's, I think that's it for the day then. So we've got some tidying up work to do, because uh, as uh, Matthias mentioned, we want to break these into individual repositories so that we can deploy them separately. Um, but we've got a, a, a cake script now that will hand, be able to handle those things, I think. Um, is the building, uh, Matthias, is the building of a, an Azure function project, is that just a .NET publish, .NET build and .NET publish? Or is there more, a bit more to it than that? List will filter by partition key and get will filter by row key. Okay, that sounds like an implementation detail, but uh, we'll come back to that one. Uh, and you, the answer to my question was that yes, it's just a done that publish. Okay, cool. So the current cake script that we have should be able to handle that. Um, okay, in which case, I think that's me done for today. Uh, this has been fun. This is a, I, I, I pl toyed with Azure Functions previously, but um, seeing it all come together, this is pretty cool. I like I like this. Um, and as a very basic API for what we're wanting, uh, the control over the the routes here was was interesting to see. So this is, I think this could be really useful. Uh, and like I said, we didn't need a full blown ASP.NET Web API project at all uh, for what we need. There's a script in the secret. 
I'll do that. Uh, we may need to have a chat and make sure that we're all on the same, we're both on the same page with regard to this. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say farewell. So thank you to uh, everyone who joined in. Uh, appreciated. Next stream will be on Monday night, where I'll continue with some of this. Um, the there won't be a stream next Friday at lunchtime because I'm in London, so I won't be here. But this has been fun. Um, let's let's reconvene on on Monday evening and see how far we can get. Uh, thank you very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna say farewell. Thank you. <laughs>